Welcome to the third episode of the Ceramic Taxidermy series. In this episode, I'm going to be teaching you how to paint your jackalope. So we're going to be using acrylic paint and I'll be showing you a lot of different techniques that you may be able to apply to your final project as well. Depending on the pacing of how we're firing with the kilns, you may actually start by making your final project first, depending on how quickly these jackalopes come out of the kiln. So the order of these episodes may be a little bit um, optional as far as what you're working on next. But in this episode, I am just going to be teaching you how to paint your jackalope. So we're going to learn a lot of different techniques. I'm going to break it down step by step and show you some things that will be really helpful to know before you paint your final project. So let's go ahead and get started. Before I show you all of the painting steps, I would like to show you where to collect the necessary supplies for painting your projects. And the first thing that you're going to need is a piece of printer paper, which can be found just right by the front door. You'll grab a piece of printer paper, and this is actually going to act as a placemat so that you're not painting on the tables and you'll have less to clean up afterwards. Next, you're going to come over to the painting section, which is just beneath the actual paint, and you're going to grab a couple of different things. So first, we're going to need a set of brushes, and now you get to work with the brushes that are in the boxes because these are meant for acrylic paint, whereas a lot of the brushes you've been using for this class have been our glazing brushes, which are in these tin cans and clearly not as nice. <laughs> so we're going to get to work with these acrylic brushes, which is really exciting. So you'll grab a set for your table. You'll also grab one of these water cups for yourself or enough for your whole table. And these are very unique in the fact that you can have two separate sections of water. So you can have one area of water that is meant for clean water and one area that's meant for dirty water, which makes it a lot easier while you're painting to keep things nice and neat. The next thing that you may consider grabbing, and this is sort of up to you, I'm not sure if we're actually going to need this for this project, but these are really helpful. They are actually meant for horse vitamins, but they make excellent storage for paint if you plan on taking longer than one class to paint something. So these are really helpful for storage. If you mix a color that you really like and you want to keep using it, you can just put it in here and then use a piece of um, packing tape to go over the top of it and it should stay uh, workable for a couple of class periods. So you can grab one of these if you feel it is necessary. However, these projects are pretty small, so I don't know that it will take you much longer. And in that case, it is easier to work on a paper plate just or a piece of um, wax paper so that you can blend and mix your colors together a little bit easier. Whereas in here, you're working with like solid cells and it's a bit more difficult to blend those colors and have a variation. So um, it's really up to you whether you think you'll need longer than a class period or not. I prefer to mix my colors on something that's a flat surface. So I actually prefer working with wax paper, but again, if you feel like you won't be able to finish this in a class period and you'd like to be able to keep your paint and use it for the next class since acrylic paint does dry fairly quickly, then you could work in those horse vitamin containers or you can just grab one of these pieces of wax paper that's found directly beneath the paper towel dispenser and right next to the paint. This is our paint storage area. So as you can see, everything is sorted by color. If you're confused where to put things back, there are labels in case all of the paint is taken out for some reason. And the label is above the section that it represents. So it says purples, which are located beneath. So we're going to collect some colors that I'm going to use for mine. And remember that you do not have to copy this exactly. You should paint your jackalopes to be as unique as you want it to be. So I'm gonna show you some basic techniques that will be helpful for painting realistic eyes, for painting the nose, for adding different values to other sections. But really the color choices are totally up to you. So as long as you're following these basic steps of the basic skills you'll need to know for painting these, you can choose any colors that you'd like to work with. So I am going to start by grabbing the burnt sienna and I'm going to use that 
to help me mix the colors on the iris of my jackalope, so the colored part of the eye. And I'm going to use it to paint part of the fur and also to add some of the value of the antlers. Next, I think I'm going to grab um, maybe some of this uh, yellow ochre. I am gonna work with this to kind of lighten up some patches of fur and also to paint the iris. I'm definitely gonna need some white. So I'm just gonna grab some of this, um, the larger jug of white. I also have to have black, so we're gonna use this um, for at least the pupil, but you're always welcome to add more. I do think that there are interesting ways to create darker values rather than just relying on black because black can mute a lot of your colors. So we'll talk about interesting ways to create darker values of colors, but I am gonna use this at least for the pupil. Um, I'm also going to consider what colors I want the actual animal's um, fur to be. So I might add just a little bit of this orange into it as well, just to give it a, a more coppery tone. So that's pretty much all I'm going to use. Now I'm going to show you the amounts that I'm going to grab of each one. So now I'm going to show you how much of each of these paint colors I'm going to grab because I'd say this is the biggest mistake that students make when they're working with paint is that they'll grab way too much and then end up throwing away a bunch of paint. So I do not need very much black. Again, I'm just using that for the pupil and maybe for darkening a couple of values, but I'm going to rely on other colors to darken things up for me. Next, I'm going to grab some of this yellow ochre. And because I'm using this for the iris, because I'm using this for the fur, I'm going to grab a more medium size, so about the size of a quarter. And I'm just going to add that here. And I'm going to have to carry this piece of paper or wax paper over to my desk. So I need to be extra careful not to put things too close to the edge so that it doesn't just plop right off. So this is the burnt sienna. I'm going to grab about a quarter size of this as well. It is a little bit runnier, so if you do experience one that's uh, got some like liquidy stuff to it, feel free to just shake it a little bit just to kind of help mix that paint up. And if it's starting to come out really liquidy, I would start by shaking it before you actually try to pour it out. Next, I'm going to grab some white and I am going to use a decent amount of white just because that's something I'm going to be mixing with. So I'm just going to grab like a dollop of white right there. And it does come out a little thicker than the other paint. Some of these consistencies are not going to be even all the way through, that's totally fine. Next, I'm going to grab the chrome orange. And I don't need very much of this. And uh, I'm just gonna set that right in the center here, more of like a dime size. Now that I've collected all of the paint that I need onto my wax paper, I have to return all of these bottles back to the correct sections, and that is a step that students forget all the time. So be careful that you don't forget this because we want to keep this space over here nice and tidy so that people can find what they need. When you're ready to carry this back to your table, you're just going to very carefully hold it so that it's kind of like tilted towards the center and you don't have like the edges tilted out because that's when you drip paint on the floor. So I'm kind of folding it in half and carrying it on either side for the long ends and I'll carry it back to my desk this way. I wanted to show you the two different cells for this cup to use as both the clean water and the dirty water sections. So since I won't need as much clean water, I'll use this center cell as the clean water area. And then to clean my brush each time, I'll only use the outside ring. Before we begin painting your jackalopes, I would like to give you just a couple of tips about working with acrylic paint. The first tip that I'm going to give you is that you should use minimal amounts of paint when you're trying to get colors to blend together especially. Because if you have a large amount of paint, working with acrylic paint is usually, um, it's harder to blend if you've got like a large patch of paint. It's much easier if there's like a small amount that you can just sort of mix together with the color that you're trying to blend it with. So working with a small amount of paint every single time you dip your paintbrush is going to be really beneficial for you. 
The second tip I'll give you for working with acrylic paint is that when you're trying to get colors to blend together, I don't rinse my paintbrush very often. In fact, the technique that I use instead is to swipe extra paint off of my paintbrush onto either my wax paper that I'm using as a palette or onto a, a paper towel. So I like to swipe off the extra paint and then add another color because it's still con the paintbrush will contain some of the original color and it'll help you with that blending process. It'll help you blend those colors together because the original color will still be on your paintbrush a little bit. So it is really helpful to avoid washing your brush too much. Another reason why you don't want to rinse out your brush too much is because it'll make your paint a lot more watery. So that tech, that texture makes it so that the paint is not, it's very translucent. You can see through it. And so you can see like your layers when you go back and forth. So when you add too much water, it makes your paint almost see-through. So that's something to avoid. The third and final tip that I'll give you for working with acrylic paint, and you'll see a lot of other techniques and tips throughout this entire video, but something that's really important to remember with acrylic paint is that you'll most likely be adding a lot of layers to your project, especially when you're painting over the top of something that's very smooth or flat. For example, your jackalope's ears are going to take multiple layers to make it look solid enough to be a quality style of painting. So if you can see like the strokes of your paintbrush or you can see like the lines on the edge of like where it kind of squishes out from beneath your paintbrush, that means that you need to add more layers. So going into this project, knowing that even if you feel like you get the perfect blend, like when you first try it out and you have two colors transitioning together, to make it look like a quality piece, you're probably going to need to do it again. So this is a lot of layering, a lot of back and forth and going over it and over it again. So just know that this is a little bit more time consuming. It will require multiple layers. So going into it, knowing that I think is really helpful so that you don't feel like it's taking extra work. That's just part of working with acrylic paint. I'm going to begin by painting the eyes because that's something that we all have in common. And of course you can use different colors. You can do a variation of these steps, but I think they are pretty consistent through a lot of different animals so you'll be able to use this for a lot of variety of projects for what you choose for your final result. So I'm going to start by thinking about the fact that underneath the eyelid is typically where it's darkest because the eyelid provides a shadow when light is coming from the top. So I'm going to consider that the shadow of my iris should be at the top and then it should gradually fade and get lighter as it gets towards the bottom. So I'm going to start just by grabbing some of this burnt sienna and I'm going to just start by painting at the top of my eyelid. So just going up against that space and I'm working with a pointed brush so that I can have a bit more control. And what we want to avoid is leaving any little ridges of paint. We want our paint to lay nice and flat. So I'm just continuing to paint that darker edge. And you can go all the way up to the eyelid edge here too. I'd say one of the biggest tricks to working with acrylic paint is painting one section at a time so that you can help these colors blend together while the paint is still wet. But something that you should know about acrylic paint is that it dries very quickly. So to help my next color fade into the burnt sienna, I'm just getting a little bit of that gold on my brush and notice that I didn't clean off any of the burnt sienna. I just left it on there. And I'm continuing this step while my burnt sienna is still wet. So I'm just going over the top of that burnt sienna with this gold. And my own entire goal at this point is to just blend away the line of the burnt sienna. Now I blended away the line of the burnt sienna in most of these spaces, but I did kind of cover up a lot of the burnt sienna. So I'm just going to grab a very small amount. And that's another trick with working with acrylic paint is not using too much at once. So I'm going to grab just a small amount of that burnt sienna and come back over the top of this edge. And I'm just trying to kind of work back and forth until I get a nice smooth blend 
of these two colors next to each other. And I don't want the shadow to end too quickly, so I'm actually going to bring that burnt sienna down a little bit. And now in the bottom of this area, I want my gold to really stand out. So I'm going to kind of brush off some of that burnt sienna. Rather than rinsing my brush, I'm just removing it by swiping on my palette. And then I'm going to take this gold and paint just a solid gold section at the bottom of my eye. And then I'm going to bring it up into that space. Now, to help these colors blend together a little bit more, again, I'm going to remove that color from my brush so that it's almost like a working with a dry brush. And I'm doing that so that I can blend the, these colors together. Like so. So I realized it's sort of hard for you to see without the sunlight shining on it, so I'm lifting it up just so that you can see the color transition. Now, for your eye, it doesn't matter which two colors you choose, but I do want you to have an ombre fade from one color to another, and you can choose which two colors you'd like to work with, but your eyes do have to have an obvious transition from one color to another. So this is how my jackalope's eyes look before I go through and add any of the other details. Now, you could just have the blend with the transition between your two colors. I think I might actually go back through and add a ring of that brown going all the way around because that is something that you'll quite often see on both animals and humans, that they have a darker ring around the outside of their iris. Now I'm going to go through and just kind of add a highlight at the bottom of the iris and I swiped a lot of my white off so I like added a tiny bit. I haven't cleaned my brush at all throughout this entire process and then I just swiped it on my wax paper so that I wouldn't have very much and I'm just doing like a light little dusting so I want this to kind of blend in. Sometimes I do even use my fingers a little bit to help me smudge and to make something look a little softer. So now I'm gonna go back through, add that on this side, and we always wanna make sure we're making our eyes as symmetrical as possible. So if we do something to one eye, we need to do it to both. So now that I've added just that little bit of a highlight, I'm going to come in and add my um, real solid highlights just up at the top. And the highlights of an eye are typically found on the darkest area of the iris. They show up where the shadow is. So I'm actually just gonna come in and add just a little highlight off to the side. I'm gonna add that on the same side of the eye over here. Just a little highlight. And now that I've got my highlights and I've taken care of the white, I'm going to come in and add my pupil. So we can just kind of remove the white pretty easily by brushing it on the side of our wax paper. And I'm getting a very small amount of black. And you have some options with the sizing of your pupil. So we do want it to be right in the center. So I'm gonna start just by making the, board, the outside border as even as possible. So I'm imagining that my iris is a just a big sphere, and I'm trying to make the border as even as I possibly can. Now, this does not touch all the way to the top, but if you wanted it to, you could make this a little bit larger and kind of have it come up towards the top a little bit more. I also like to start with the left side so that since I'm right-handed, I can look at it when I'm painting the other side. So, for example, I could look at that pupil while I'm painting this side, whereas if I painted the right first, I'd be covering it with my hand when I was painting the next one. Kind of think that through if you're right-handed or left-handed, which side to paint first. And I'm just gonna paint up to my highlight. I'm not gonna, like, cover it up. I still have a couple touch-ups to do, but I'm going to try to make this next one match before I do too much. So now I'm going to come in with this black 
and I'm gonna try really hard to make these symmetrical. So I'm gonna start by filling this in because sometimes it's hard to tell if something is symmetrical when it's just an outline. So here are my pupils. Um, I might go through and just add a little bit of this black to the top of my eyelid to kind of just blend it in a little bit more. I feel like it's kind of standing out a lot right now. And then to help tie that in on the rest of my eyelid, I'm actually going to not clean my brush off. I'm actually sort of mixing that brown, the burnt sienna, with a little bit of that black. And I'm just gonna continue that in the top of my eyelid. Now you have the option of helping uh, kind of blend your eye, like the pupil out into your iris by just taking a little bit of that darker color and blending that out from the edge. Might make it a little bit less intimidating, like it's not looking at you so much. So I kind of went a little bit too far, I'd say, into the bottom of this eye. So I'm actually coming in with a little bit of gold to kind of help blend that back. Now for the nose, I'm going to mix a lighter, kind of a pinky color. Um, so I'm grabbing some of this orange and I'm going to just bring that over to the side, kind of clean off my brush. And I'm gonna grab a large amount of this white to mix with it. Now this probably got a little bit light, so I'm gonna grab just a little bit more of that orange, kind of mix it together only on one side too, so that I can have some variation in the colors that I can choose from. So I've got kind of a mixture going there and I'm just going to paint the bottom of my nose. It's probably a little um, too light, so I'm gonna grab some of this dark and kind of bring that in on the nose itself. And then I'm going to just kind of swipe off the extra paint so that I don't have too much because when you're trying to blend these colors together, I'd say the biggest tip I have is to not use too much paint. And then I'm gonna just bring some of that dark back into the corner here. So now that I've got kind of an edge there, I'm gonna remove some of the paint from my brush, kind of mix that in. So now for the cheeks, they are typically lighter than uh, the rest of the animal. So I'm gonna take some of the color that I mixed before that lighter orange, and I'm going to just add that in. Now, while that center space is still uh, fairly wet, I'm going to come back in, kind of swipe off some of my excess so that I don't have too much paint, because again, that's really hard to blend that way. And I'm going to take some of my burnt sienna and I'm gonna put that right in the center. And I'm just sort of like swiping that repeatedly to help it blend in. So that you can see a little variation there. And then I'm just gonna continue working my cheek sections. And I'm gonna paint my chin a little bit lighter. I'm gonna actually go white here so as I'm painting in this space here, I'm trying to kind of fill in some of the white into these fur sections. Now that I've got that mostly painted, I do need to come back through and add some shadow in these creases for the mouth. I'm doing that while my paint is wet. So now I'm gonna start fading this orange out into some of my brown. And I didn't clean off my brush because that helps these colors kind of transition together. So I'm kind of having my brown start out on my cheeks. And then I'm just sort of 
trailing out and pressing a little bit lighter. even more of this burnt sienna. So I want to continue working on this one side because it's still wet. I'd say something that students often struggle with is they'll kind of jump around from space to space. So I'm trying to kind of stay on one side and finish it before I move on to the next. Now I'm getting closer to the cheeks which is where I want to have this fade out and I see that I have quite a bit of paint there so I'm going to clean that off and then I'm actually going to just get a little bit of white on my brush and blend it on my actual animal. So I'm going to continue making it pretty dark um, along the eyelid. So I'm taking that burnt sienna, just going around the eye. Now I want this crease to be a bit darker, so I'm going to keep layering some of that burnt sienna into that space. And I can even um, take maybe a little bit of that orange, mix it with some black, and just kind of apply it in there, just a small amount. And then I'll come back over the top of it with some of that burnt sienna to kind of mix it in. Now black is pretty hard to get rid of on your brush, so I'm actually going to clean my brush in my water, get that all the way off. So now I'm going to come back in with just some of that plain burnt sienna, kind of mix that into the eyebrow, kind of help that transition out to the nose. Now on the actual nose itself, I'm going to get some more of the white on my brush and just a small amount of that burnt sienna because I want my nose to be a little bit lighter. That's actually where the sun is hitting also, the light is touching there. So it should be a bit lighter no matter which color you're painting your animal. Now that's a bit too light for me, so I'm gonna go back through and add in some more of that burnt sienna. And I don't have very much of it on my brush to avoid having it change too drastically. I'm sort of just brushing it over the top very lightly so that I can actually leave some of that lighter color shining through on the fur underneath. And then I'm gonna grab just some of that pure burnt sienna Kind of fill in around the eyebrow. I grabbed a larger amount to just help me fill in around here. I'm gonna go all the way up to the antlers. Now I'm just gonna start swiping it towards the nose, maybe even a little bit like through here. And I can leave some of that texture with the lighter version. So I'm like letting some of those creases not get filled in. Now I do want a solid tone over here, so I'm gonna fill that in a little. there's that side. Now we're going to just repeat all of these same steps on the next side. 
So now that both of these sides are fairly even in the way that they have been painted and I have a nice smooth transition to a lighter version of my color on my cheeks, I am actually going to go through and redefine the edge of my mouth just a little bit to make it a little bit stronger. So I'm going to grab some of my burnt sienna and I didn't grab very much. Notice we never grab very much and I'm going to just first outline underneath the cheeks. And now that I've outlined just that little kind of a V shape, I'm actually going to make a straight line across. We're going to bring this all the way out to where the rest of our stronger burnt sienna color is. And I'm just lightly brushing this across that space to make it more of a solid edge. Next I'm going to do just an ombre fade from like a darker orange to a lighter orange on the back of his ear. So this is a little bit tricky to get to sometimes so um, I'm just taking my brush and sliding it behind the antlers, painting in that orange, I'm starting with the orange and I'm just kind of bringing that out a little bit and I might even take some of my yellow ochre and blend that in as well just so it's not so strong of a color so I'm going to take some of this yellow and just kind of blend that in there and while that's wet so like immediately after I add this first layer I'm going to take some white I'm going to lay that out first down here while my brush, I haven't rinsed it. It's still got that color in it that I was worth just working with. And I'm filling in all the way up to the edge. And then while this is wet, I'm going to take this and just kind of go into that space that I just painted. I'm going to grab just a little bit of water I did lose kind of a lot of that orange so I'm going to come back in and while this is wet because as you could see that first layer kind of had dried so it didn't really blend together as much so blending these layers while they're still wet is very important and I'm going to add a little bit of water to my brush to help these colors kind of transition together a little bit more so it doesn't look quite so dry. Now I'm going to grab a little bit more of that orange, kind of put that up against this edge and along the bottom here. just a little bit more water, not too much, just a little bit. Just a little bit of this white down at the bottom. And there's another section of ombre for our ears. So we're gonna repeat that on the next side. I'd say that's pretty smooth. That's sort of what we're looking for. They match each other, so that's probably good for now. Next, I'm gonna come in with more of my burnt sienna. Just paint the outside edges of the ears. All the way behind it too. Now that I've painted both the ears on the inside and the outside, I can move to painting my antlers. And the color that I'm gonna choose for that is just this gold ochre. So I, um, I'm just gonna take that plain solid gold and add that on. I didn't really clean my brush out either in hopes that some of that burnt sienna would kind of show through. 
It can actually go back in and add some of that. While I'm working, I'm gonna take some of this burnt sienna and along the base especially, I'm gonna try to get these to blend a little bit more. So I'm gonna just take some of this, kind of blend it in at the bottom, especially in the front. It doesn't matter as much on the back of the antler. Along the base of the head, along the bottom of the antler. So now that I have both of my antlers painted with that gold ochre or the yellow ochre and I've got the transition at the bottom, I'm actually going to do the same thing at the top of these points of the antlers. So I'm going to just take some of this burnt sienna and kind of brush it down. doesn't need to be very dramatic. I'm just trying to make them a little bit darker at the top. Now that I've got the tips painted with a darker tone, I'm just going to go through and paint the bottom of my jackalope with this burnt sienna. As I'm working, I'm continuously dipping my brush in the water because as you can see, it does um, take a lot of effort to get into all of those creases that we created for the fur. So I'm working with a pointed brush. I continuously have been dipping into the water to make sure that my paint is liquidy enough to get into that little tiny section for each piece of fur. And I'm really working hard to make sure that I'm filling it all the way in. So I've painted the entire chest and you can go through and add a little variation to it as well. So I'm gonna just take a little bit of water on my brush load up just a small amount of white, just barely mixed in. And I'm gonna just kind of touch over the top of some of these sections of fur, just to kind of give it a little bit of a highlight. And there we go, that's probably enough. It is kind of a bright highlight, so I might actually just like add some water to my brush, kind of rinse out any of that extra white, and then I'm just gonna go over the top of it to help it blend in with the colors behind it. Now, you'll notice that I only painted up to where it's actually going to be touching the wall. I did paint the back of my ears, and as you can see, just adding one layer to the back of something that's flat, especially with a darker color, usually requires two layers. So I'm gonna go through and add another layer here, but wherever it is touching the wall, you don't have to add paint. In fact, please don't, because that actually wastes the paint since people won't even see that area. So I'm gonna go back through and add just another layer of our burnt sienna to the back of my ears to make it a little bit smoother. This is how my jackalope turned out. And there are specific techniques that you do have to incorporate for yours, but again, the color choices are totally up to you. So what I would like for you to practice from this example is having the irises that have a transition from a darker color to a lighter color, having your pupil in the center with your highlight off to the side that's nice and sharp, maybe even continuing that darker edge onto the eyelid. And that's all you need to incorporate for your eyes. As far as the cheeks and the mouth, I would like for you to have them be a slightly different variation of the color that's on the outside edge and have a nice smooth transition back into it. Underneath the mouth, you do need to have a stronger shadow and it should end in a straight edge across the bottom. As far as your antlers go, I would like to see a bit of a transition or a color blend in some way. Same with the back of your ears. And again, the color choices that you choose are totally up to you. On the back, you should paint whatever won't be touching the wall. So for me, I painted the back of the head, the back of the ears, but not the actual surface, as you can see. 
So those are the requirements for our jackalope. Now, before we say that we're done, we have to do our final step, which is adding the final layer of varnish. It's a very shiny Mod Podge. It's a high gloss spray. And let me show you how to do that step. The next step is to take a piece of printer paper, your can of Mod Podge, and uh, your animal, of course. And we're going to set your jackalope just right in the center. I like to do it landscape because when we carry these in, we're actually going to carry them by the paper. So we're going to take our can of Mod Podge. You wanna shake it around um, for about 30 seconds to a minute and get that nice and stirred up in there. And then what we're going to do next is very carefully and evenly spray this over the top of our animal. So I'm going to be about like six inches back and I'm just going to do this very lightly at first just to see how it's going. We don't want to overdo it. I'm going to push the paper down to make sure I'm getting the side edges. And then we do want it to get pretty glossy. So I'm going to just make sure I don't have any like spotty looking areas. Kind of come at it from a different angle. And that's good. So we're going to carry this in by holding the outside edges of this piece of paper. But what can be really damaging to your project is if you actually lift this piece of paper up too much so that it touches the surface of your animal and it will actually get stuck and then leave a little, a little bit of that piece of paper stuck to your animal. So you want to hold it as flat as possible and carry it so carefully so that you don't have the paper get stuck to your animal or so that you don't drop it off of the piece of paper. It can be quite challenging, so take your time and walk in carefully. So this is how my little jackalope turned out after being sprayed with that high gloss Mod Podge. I'm pretty excited about it. And again, you are welcome to choose whichever colors you would like, as long as you are practicing the skills that we learned for the fur, the eyes, the antlers, the ears, etc. So the last step is to take your photos to submit this. And I actually just made a cute little stand just for these guys since they're kind of tiny. So let me show you how to take your photos to submit this project. So this is the little stand that I just made to set your animals on. And you're going to just set your jackalope here and make sure that it's not gonna slide off because that would be a really big bummer if these broke at this point. And we wanna hide as much of the stand as possible behind our little uh, animal. So you're going to stand back in about here and make sure that you're not standing in the light because if you stand here, then you're blocking the light for yourself. So stand off to the side and you're going to take a photo and it should be portrait, but again, this is just landscape for the video. So you're going to take a photo that's about from here and then again, another one from the side. Now the problem is that oftentimes people will hold it so that you can see like the edge, which that is just not great to have in the picture. So make sure that you're standing off to the side and still staying within the space of the background. So you're going to take a close up one as well. So you can kind of get a little bit closer and try to find good lighting, probably about here. So you're going to take three photos of your project. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this episode. I hope that you learned a lot of helpful painting techniques that you can not only use for your jackalope, but on your final project for this unit as well. Thanks for watching.